call this meeting to order. Welcome to the Cannon Rockport Schools regular school board meeting, Wednesday, May 18th, 2022, for the first time from the Rose Hall boardroom. Maria, are there any adjustments to the agenda? There are not. Are there any public comments on items not on the agenda? <laughs> Hi, Patrick. Hi. Um, I am Julie Spino, K-4 Spanish teacher and president of the MTA. And as I stood up at the CSD board meeting, uh, I wanted to express my gratitude and thanks um, for the appreciation that the board has um, sent to all of uh, the educators in this district, thank you um, for acknowledging the amazing work that my colleagues are doing. Um, as I said, the maple syrup was very much appreciated. Uh, so thank you for all the, um, as I said, the encouragement and appreciation both this month and throughout the year. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments on items not on the agenda? Seeing none, uh, agenda item number four is recognition. There's one recognition, and that is that this um, middle school that just opened last year recently won a, an award from the American Institute of Architects, a main design award, and that award was a citation for excellence in architecture, and the middle school will be featured, I think it's the July issue of Maine Home and Design Magazine. So, any local press on that? Do we know? I don't know. The awards were just given out last week, so they were just public last week. Um, I haven't been in touch with anybody it's about that. Social media platforms. Yeah. So, that's great. We can get the word out there. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah, Bring the test of that. We're sitting here. It's. Um, this building is beautiful. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. We're, not, we're, not sitting, right. we're not sitting here anymore. We're sitting in Rose Hall. Yeah, last month we were sitting there and it was gorgeous. Uh, right. Uh, agenda item number five is the approval of the April 13th, 2022 regular board meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Minutes are approved. Number six, uh, nominations. We have teacher nominations for 2022-2023. Yep, so we have a whole slate of new teacher nominations to fill positions for next fall. There are four people there. I think, well, most of them out there at CRESP, one mostly focused on the elementary school, that's a special education, I mean, middle school social worker. Can I get a motion to approve those teacher nominations? Moved. Second. Uh, any questions or discussion? Just have a question. The uh, psychologist, does she, did she intern at the elementary school? She did. She was our intern this year. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor? Great. Welcome to the team. Agenda item number seven, notification of resignations. So we have one resignation tonight, and that's Annie Brady, who's the music teacher at the elementary school, who um, will be going through the end of the year, but it's heading to a larger city life. Mm. And Brady, sorry to see you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Agenda item number eight, approval to grant superintendent the authority to issue contracts to new hires over the summer, effective immediately. Uh, this is something we do every year because we won't meet in the summer. Um, so Maria, this is granting Maria or? Or John. That's yeah, or Sean, uh, the superintendent. Yep. <laughs> the, the authority to issue contracts to new hires over the summer. Do I have a motion to uh, approve that? So Second. Any questions or discussion? Uh, where are we? All those in favor? Uh, great. Permission granted. Excellent. Thank you. Of course. Agenda item number nine, Brown Tail Moth Management, uh, Shane Hendrick from TreeWorks. He is not here. He has a scheduling. 
there was a scheduling conflict, so we're going to have to move that to the next one. We just got to hold it. All right. Not seeing Shane, we will move on to agenda item number 10. Wait, are we? I guess there's no sense in well, asking Shane any questions if he's not here. Was the nature of that agenda item just a, a report on work he's already done, or is this a, what's the nature of that? The Not nature that. of that agenda item was to provide more information about what the intention was for um, managing Brown Tail Moth. Okay. And to hear from the person who was actually going to apply the spray and to understand more about what the spray was about. So we're going to have to move that agenda item to the next meeting. Okay. Is that a moot point for this year, though, because is it too late to spray anything? Probably. Okay. Um, we didn't, I mean, somebody was here, but it's, I, I don't, it's almost like we're going back to uh, agenda items not on the agenda, because I didn't know that this item was going to actually be retracted till right now. So we do have somebody here who came for that agenda item. I don't know if you want to say anything or you want to wait till it's on the agenda another time. I do want to say, we had, we had it scheduled to spray, right, and the board decided not to. I think the leadership said, not, let's cancel the spray. Correct. Do we cancel this year's spray? We didn't spray this year. Yes. And what we wanted was to have the person come in to give everybody, the board okay. and the public, okay. more information about what it actually was. Good. Okay. Perfect. So, back to Marina. Do you sure. feel like you want to say something now, or would you want to wait till it's on the agenda again? Sure. No, I, I, if, if I can just take a, a few minutes to say, um, can, you, can you hear me okay? Yeah. We're gonna, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you could just stand up and... State your name and where you're from. Sure. Um, my name is Marina Schaffler and I'm a local resident um, and a parent of kids in the school. And um, I just wanted to um, thank you for inviting um, public input on this decision and say that there is now a non-toxic opportunity for brown tail control that I think would be a really neat educational um, have great educational value for the district as well, which is um, drone, um, using drones to remove the nests during winter time. There are a couple practitioners, one in Litchfield, one in Bloomville, and there may be additional ones because they've been very, very busy apparently. Um, there's a lot of interest in, in that means of control, and it seems like getting students engaged in that, learning about drone technology, being able to maybe have some classes out with, you know, watching that and learning about it um, could be a really effective. Um, and also just teaching students that there are reasons to pursue non-toxic alternatives where, where they exist. Um, given that we were losing like globally 40% of our insect population and have a real problem with pollinators, um, it would be a chance to, to teach students about, you know, what's happening there and an option um, locally to avoid um, systemic insecticides. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a comment on that. I've seen that being done. I ran into Blue Hill fellow, uh, Tom Massey in Blue Hill, um, and if he's trimming trees with drones, and that's pretty fascinating. I'd, I'd be curious on the data of the e efficacy of that. I mean, it, it seems like it just came here. I think it's an outfit from Canada that provided the, uh, the technology or the, uh, the trimming mechanism. Um, but it can only be done in the winter, is that, is that what you were saying? Yeah, they, they recommend before April, so you want to get it before the nests, they're starting to emerge from their nests. Yeah, maybe I'll can get in touch with Tom Massey and see if he has any data on how, um, how effective that's been. Uh, any other questions or comments about brown tail moth management? I'm starting to itch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a little, little early to tell, I guess, but last year it was a little bit better than the year before, well, a lot bit better than the year before. Um, agenda item number 10 is the board chair's report. Uh, so you have an email from Colin about um, 
which is the um, uh, superintendent evaluation. We need that, um, if you could do that, we need that back within a week. Um, so if, you, if you've got that in your email, um, if you can fill that out, and then we will meet as a board and go over it and right. aggregate our yes, various. So we need those in advance of that. Right, okay. Yeah, all right. 20, we need... I think the 25th is Monday. Yeah, so yeah. From today. So we need those maybe by, month, by Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be awesome. And we'll meet at, as a joint, the CSD and the SAD, and aggregate um, those evaluations and uh, come to a consensus and present that to Maria. Any questions on that? Just a dumb one, perhaps. But, uh, did, did Colin send out a separate email for the SAD board, or if, if you serve on both? Yeah. I feel like I've already done this once. Is that enough? One and you were, when you fill it out, you should be thinking about wearing both hats. Is what we've typically okay. done. You only fill out one. Okay. I've yeah. only got one. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, and the summer board retreat is usually mid to late August, and um, it has been proposed we do it August 25th? Yes. August 25th. Is that, does that work for everyone? Well, uh, pretty hard to tell. <laughs> I'm away that week. Um, I'm here the week before. But we can see how everybody works out. All right, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna send an email after we leave and see who that doesn't work for. And if it's overwhelming, we'll um, consider making some changes. But for now, uh, consider it August 25th. What, uh, how much of August 25th? Um, like 4 to 7, 48, yeah. something like that. Oh, so like the one like we just before. had? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no location has been set yet, but. <coughs> Traditionally, it's been uh, flatbread, I think. Uh, flatbread and rock roll. I liked the one at Bishop Slip. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Great. Yeah. Uh, okay, agenda item number 11 is the superintendent's report. I don't have anything to add beyond what I um, submitted in my written report. I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. Did you say nice job last night? Yeah, thanks. A lot of information. Typing it out as fast and efficiently as possible. <laughs> <laughs> CSD was, yeah, I mean, we had like three minutes to spare, so. I know. It was good. Um, all right, any questions from Maria? Seeing none, we'll go on to administrative reports. First is uh, Deb McIntyre, our assist assistant superintendent. So my report's in your packet. The only thing I did want to add is um, regarding the outdoor learning and the rev grant. The evaluators were on site today um, they and yesterday, both days, uh, two days in a row. They actually got to visit with the pre-K group. They experienced um, our Let's see, kindergarten went to all near farms today, so it was the first time actually one of the evaluators had actually seen a live cow. Mm -hmm. So uh, we kind of made his day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, he'd never seen a cow in real life. And so I'm like, well, I hope we have made your. Yeah, you know, he's evaluating our. Yeah, he's evaluating our. But overall, you know, they, they will write up a report for us, which we, I will bring to the board to share. But as part of that, they also know that our pre K program is really new. And so he's going to do a little extra work around some of the um, results that we've seen with pre-K. So that will be a really good artifact for us to use, um, especially with the Department of Education, I think, moving our outdoor 
environment um, forward for pre-K across the state. So we're really uh, excited about that. They were really, uh, teachers were great. They um, had some interview questions with teachers. They interviewed students and they had students draw pictures about what they have done for outdoor learning and then they talked about that. And it was really a very rich experience for them and really very positive. So we're excited to, to see the final report to see what that looks like. So I just wanted to update you on that. And if you have any other questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thanks, Deb. You're welcome. Any questions for Deb? And if any of you would like to substitute, we're still looking. <laughs> this Friday in particular. <laughs> so feel free, talk to me. Um, just, I, I noticed you put the screening and interviewing of applicants. Do you, is that your job exclusively? So Maria asked that I screen teacher candidates, and so then I confer with the building administrators about which candidates to be selected to be interviewed. And what's the, is there a certain position that you seek board member representation for? Sometimes board members are part of the interviews. We used to be, but not anymore. We got some legal advice, so we should not be. Yeah. I can't. I can't hear you too well, Marcia. Legal advice gave. We used to have a board on every teacher interview that we had for years, and legal advice told us we should not be doing that. That was sort of a conflict for the board to be the final voter and to be part of that process. We have not done that in I'd say five or six years for teachers. Yeah, it hasn't happened since I've been here. Got it. Um, that uh, I wasn't, uh, and this doesn't just refer to teacher, I guess it does because that's what you're responsible yeah, for. But if we were interviewing, say, a director of, I don't want to, I wasn't going to say someone who actually has a job, like, should I be worried? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, director of technology. Um, is that, is there a, a trigger that says uh, for a certain position, you say, yeah, um, engage a board member? representation? We often do have board members on administrative um, interview committees still. I'd say those are probably the only ones. Okay. All right. They're, you know, they're, yeah, they're different. We have different structures depending on the position. Um, Deb's involved in all of the teacher screening but not necessarily screening of other positions. And that's because neither Deb nor I sit on the interview committees. I do all the second interviews. Well, either Deb or I does a second interview for every person we hire. <coughs> I do them for all teachers. Deb does them for all the other positions, usually for administrators who are both on the committees. So we, we, we screen. We're, we're on the committees, we're running those. Building principals run the interviews, the first interviews, for teaching positions. And then directors run that process for their people in their, like, you know, food service, custodians. So we kind of have a system with, depending on the position, sort of how it's structured. Uh, overall, how would you say it's going? Great. You know, we don't we don't have a lot of applicants for our positions in general, but we've had some superb applicants in that small pool, which has been great. You know, we've been we've had some open positions for the entire year. For instance, we've had three custodial positions that are open that have been open the entire year that we have not been able to hire for. So we definitely have some longer term problems with filling some of our positions. Um, but, you know, we are still getting really great candidates for our teaching positions in particular, um, and a lot of our other positions that aren't necessarily uh, classroom teachers as well. So, I mean, I think it's harder, but we are fortunate that we're still getting pretty strong candidates. Great. Uh, next up is Jamie Stone, our middle school principal. I brought paper copies. Apologies, they weren't ready in time for the packet. 
I'm a little busy. Just need you for the Yeah, I'll read it to you. I don't need pictures to accompany it. Like, kind of picture books. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you might have noticed if you were around town today, it was like going to school day, so there were hundreds of children and actually a lot of family members around town, biking, walking, rollerblading, um, oh, scootering. Um, so we had a really successful day, and I just I just updated you on some events that have been happening at the school. We've been doing a lot of um, events at the Disney Theater. It's been really nice to have parents back on campus. Um, so multiple performances in the um, performing arts class. Fifth grade held a poetry night. I'm on the third bullet down there. Um, where students performed original pieces. Fifth grade held an open house style event for um, some science project work they had done. Um, we were just finishing up some state testing. Uh, which has all been moved to the month of May, which has made May very different. Uh, we see some of it in March. Um, share a little bit about my attendance at the Maine Principals Conference this year, which I found really helpful in strategizing with other local people about kind of how to re-enter next year and help um, support staff and students just in um, kind of coming back to school, hopefully in an even more typical way. And we got a chance to serve on a couple of administrator panels for principals in training this year, which was really enjoyable to see that people still want to come into this job and help inspire them to do that. Um, Sports-wise, all of our programs are running, all of our after-school programs are running. We have been hit pretty hard in baseball and softball. I think we'll be lucky if we end up getting half a season of games for both of those um, groups, three, if it's three teams. Um, so schools canceled because of COVID. We have schools that we play that don't have transportation. Um, it's rained an amazing amount this spring. Uh, so it just feels like around every corner is another cancellation. So that's a little disappointing, but we're doing our best to get it in there. Um, and then just some gratitude and shout out. The Parent Alliance held a wonderful luncheon for us and did a, just a lovely job of acknowledging our um, staff. It was like the old days. They made food and um, brought gift cards. It was really lovely. Um, several parents also just brought in lots of um, gifts of appreciation for a few weeks. We organized a bagel breakfast and then thanks to the board for the syrups, they were appreciated by the staff. And the superintendent's office came through with the snack wagon yesterday, which we appreciated. And we have student-led conferences over the next two days. We are offering them in person and remote and the majority of people so far have signed up for in-person conferences, um, which will be exciting for people to be able to walk through the building. So every time we're open, we, we open the whole building and say if you'd like to come through, please do, and we try to walk people through. And then we have a band and chorus concert coming up at Strong in the end of May. And I'll give you the rest of the updates for June events in our June meeting. Thank you, Thanks. You have a contingent that bikes here all year round. Yes, the biker gang of, they're actually from, I do call them biker gang Camden, most of them are from Camden. It's the loveliest thing to see in the morning. And sometimes if I miss them, I'll be out running and I'll see the tracks in the snow. <laughs> yes. I don't and think it, they missed a day back then. It was yes. just awesome because they'd come down Union Street and then Lime Rock yeah. Street. And you could just see them going to each other's houses. Yes. This is fabulous. Yeah. We actually were contacted by um, Channel 6 to do a little story. And I called back a number of times and we, they didn't end up picking it up. but. They contacted us. We had put it out through social media um, just to celebrate the kids because they're so resilient and they will travel in pouring rain, snowstorms. It's oh, yeah. pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they had a bigger bike game today. Uh, they're really fun. Um, and we, I did start an Instagram page for the school um, in part to target students because that's the platform. If kids are on social media, most often that is what, that's what they're on. So we've done a lot to kind of acknowledge different students for doing like really cool things that are healthy, and they were in that too, in that mix. So, yeah. Any other questions for Jamie? Thanks for putting that together, Jamie. Sure. Chris Walker Spencer, our elementary school principal. Hi, everybody. Chris got my. Uh, report here for you. Certainly happy to answer any questions that you might have. And uh, I will just add on to what everyone else has mentioned here as far as the appreciation. Our parent group does a fantastic job every year of 
I've shown the love, and I'm, I know um, everyone appreciates that. So, um, and, and I will also mention that I, I tried something a little new with a staff appreciation event at my house on Friday, May, and one thing I learned is that lots of people have events on Fridays in May. So <laughs> it was a small but powerful group. And uh, you know, if, the, if it's the thought that counts, then hopefully I scored big. I got some lovely notes of regret. I can't make it. And also, uh, we had a great time for the people who were able to make it. So there is, there's that. But happy to answer questions that you have. A uh, question about the enrollment overview. Um, I was a little surprised by how many by the numbers, by the change. Mm. Is this a trend? What do we look like for next year, do we know? You know, I don't think that's all that out of line. I mean, Marie and I look closely at enrollment changes over time, mm -hmm. and typically um, they increase from, um, you know, the beginning of school one year to the next. Maybe third and fourth grade is like five or six students per year, so they're sort of on pace for that, and then it, it sort of goes down as you get into second, first, kindergarten, it might be two or three students um, that increase year to year um, in, in each grade level. So this, this seems fairly typical. As far as next year, um, it's, it seems like it's going to be a pretty typical year as far as kindergarten enrollment. Um, we had 37 kids come to our screening, but we also have pre-K. So we know that those 13 kids are coming forward to kindergarten for us. Okay. And we have plenty of room to absorb them? We do. We have um, an extra classroom available at each grade level if need be. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, it, it would require a little bit of moving in, in August if we had some a late bubble arrive. But, and, and honestly, the other thing is I actually have no idea what people are going to do in terms of COVID, whether for those who have homeschooled, for those who may be moving in or out of town, it, it's a little bit of a mystery, mystery to me, so I can't say for sure. Okay, thank you. The last thing I'd add about the Rev Grant um, folks who came today is they were really impressed with our school. They, um, they just had a lot of glowing comments, were really appreciative of our organization, our communication, our hospitality, and I'm sure they don't say that to all the schools. <laughs> <laughs> Just us. So, Chris, um, I wonder if you could elaborate a bit on the your explorations of what the ongoing partnership with Coastal Mountain Land Trust might look like. I'm just curious what the uh, what you all have in mind going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, so really what that looks like is a bit of a coaching model that, that we put in place this year for staff. So they had opportunities for some staff-wide PD, but also some one-to-one -one coaching sessions where they coach in a grade level team, for instance. So the, the potential exists, and we're, you know, it's not solidified at this point, but for opportunities for teams to meet on a monthly basis with um, their community outreach coordinator. This is someone who's worked with, uh, I want to say, Tanglewood extensively in the past and is just a, you know, a known quantity mm -hmm. in our community. Um, and um, sort of actually already joined our staff this spring for our last outdoor ed um, <coughs> professional development session. So I had a chance to meet with all the teams and have an introduction. And has been working extensively with our pre-K program all year long, um, additionally. So would this mean more outdoor learning for students at every grade level in your school? Or? Well, that's the, that's the long-term vision and the intention, yes. On-site, off-site, a little mix of both? I mean, I think it's a blend, but ultimately as much on-site as we can so it doesn't require a, a heavy lift of bus transportation and, and so forth on a regular basis. But we want regular outdoor learning opportunities for every student in our school. Thank you. Yeah. That's exciting. It goes to Mountain Land Trust. Any other questions for Chris? 
seeing none, um, next is Valerie Mattis, our Director of Student Special Services, who, um, she, no, um, she's not here. If you have any questions for mm -hmm. Valerie, um, please email her. Next is uh, Standing Committee Reports. First is Finance, which met prior to this meeting, and uh, Peter Orn is going to report in on that. I don't butcher it, we had a jam-packed meeting. That's right. <laughs> Didn't we? Uh, we, we, first, we, uh, we met with our auditor, who presented our Fiscal 21 audit for Camden Rockford Schools. Uh, the opinion was unmodified, which is the best you can get for an audit. It just means that everything was presented uh, properly. Uh, there were no material weaknesses in the presentation of the data, nor the controls that they checked. So you're just, for anybody new or watching the, um, what the auditor does is they're not looking for mistakes. They're looking to see how the flow of our money is, the money in the district and the money out of the district. And they, don't necessarily check for mistakes, although they can identify them if they're made. They're looking to make sure that we have the controls in place to identify the mistakes quickly and then prevent any further mistakes from going on. And in that, the controls were great. Uh, the one deficiency that we had with this was the same deficiency we saw in the uh, CSD, which is that the, uh, there were a lot of year-end adjustments that the auditor had to make to bring our books uh, into balance. And what that means is that some of the asset and liability accounts were likely not being reported properly throughout the year, which could throw off the financials, but in this case, they weren't substantive to affect decision making. That's really what they're looking for. So that's a, that's a uh, I think there's already been changes to the processes that uh, have those asset and liability accounts uh, reconciled on either a monthly, quarterly, or semi-annual basis the way they should be. The bank account's always done monthly, but uh, not, the other, not all the other accounts are. I think that's really it for the audit. Next, we went over the year-to-day financials, the financials through April. We are still looking to be underspent our budget. Uh, as we get closer to the year, it's easier to forecast. It looks like we'll probably be underspending the budget by between 500000 and 600000 uh, We kind of discussed the next step. That we, with the, the committee would like to see some more cross-sections of, of the spending to kind of identify where, those, where we're underspending. Uh, it's likely going to be salaries because that's the biggest part of our budget, but we just want to make sure that uh, we can identify that. We heard one tonight. We, heard, we have three custodians that we have been open positions all year. Mm -hmm. That's $120,000, $150,000 right there. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the health insurance was budgeted at 2% and it came in at zero for this for, that, for uh, this fiscal year. That's $80,000. So there, there's a, there are some explanations. We just want to, the committee wants to have more information on that. So we're, uh, just to understand it, because I think the budgeting process takes those pieces out. So we, we, we don't just increase our expenditures next year based on this year's spending. You know, it's done by a, you know, staffing. It's done in a very uh, methodical way. Uh, finally, and this, there'll be actually a motion coming out of this next topic, uh, we went over the uh, potential purchase of the electric bus that we've been talking about. Uh, as you know, the, the buses are expensive. Uh, but we have a total of $115,000. We, uh, the administration has found about $115,000 of grant money to offset the initial cost. And we went through the uh, kind of the cost of a bus, a diesel bus versus the cost of an electric bus over the useful life of that bus, which is about 200,000 miles in 15 years. And they're actually, with the rebate uh, of that uh, fit, of that uh, grant money and rebates money, uh, the cost is almost identical. Peter, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. The, that, do we all have a finance committee packet? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It's on the very back page of the yeah. information Peter's going over. So. 
So, so, the, so the, the lifetime cost is, is, is generally about the same. The difference is going to be um, how that cost is spent over the 15-year lifespan. Because the upfront cost is higher, but the operating costs are lower, the, the first few years of ownership, uh, depending on the length of the lease that we use to finance the bus, uh, could be as much as $22,000 a year more than the current budget for a diesel bus over the first five years. But then over the next 10 years, it's about $12,000 less per year. Uh, so that could, you know, that's, that's just one estimate. Uh, it depends on what the financing ends up looking like. Uh, and it's probably not un unreasonable to look at a longer term lease, uh, like a car. I mean, if you, you know, if you know cars are actually financed for a long time, if you buy a new car, you might finance it for five years and you sell it as a used car and the next person buys it five more years. So, so that number could come down, but I think worst case, uh, we're looking at probably spending an extra $22,000 a year on this bus for the next five years if uh, we're going to go forward. And there's no more, and there's no other grant money to offset it. Peter, where do these numbers, who developed these numbers? Peter Nielsen did with uh, the transportation director as well as Lion Bus and uh, with a phone call for energy uh, with CMP. Does the cost of the energy reflect our solar farm cost? No, the because the energy would be over and above the contracted over, amount. Okay. So that does reflect the high cost of energy in Maine. It does. Anything Pe missing on that? Peter, I'm wondering where the you're getting the twenty-two thousand dollars more than I did. I did a quick spreadsheet. Forty-four. Oh, yeah. I did. I did. For five-year lease. For five-year lease, but I took the rebates off the top, off the cost of the bus right up front. Um, so the net amount is a little bit different. So. Okay. So depending on how we would finance right. it, it would depend. That's going to be. Yeah. That's going to be the kind of. Yeah. How it, so so really, how it's financed and how it actually hits the expenses over the next five years is going to be kind of up to administration to figure out the best way of doing that. I think because there's a a time frame on the DERA grant that a purchase needs to be authorized. Uh, by the end of May uh, is why this is coming to board tonight, if I understand it right. So uh, I'm going to make the motion, and the committee uh, was unanimous in this, that uh, we authorize the superintendent to uh, uh, purchase an electric bus from Lion Manufacturing. Uh, the delivery date would be October 17th, is guaranteed right now. For a, uh, Total cost of the bus of three hundred and ninety-two thousand eight hundred dollars. Where does the bus get charged? Do we, is that an additional cost? So the charger is nine thousand dollars, and that that's, would that's be, the total cost for that. That's the total cost okay. of, a, of a tier two charger, which is what this a yeah. single bus would use. If you had multiple buses, you'd want to go to the, uh, the tier three, which is the much more expensive charging station. Okay. I'll second the motion so we can get to discussion. Thanks, Rick. Um, my two cents was uh, if it weren't for the $115,000 worth of grant money uh, available now, I would favor waiting just because the cost of everything is so high and I would assume that the cost of electric buses is going to come down as they become more prevalent. Um, but considering, so uh, if it weren't for the grant money, I would be, I would want to wait. Um, but since there's $115,000 in grant money on the table now, I don't want to wait. I know I saw on the news that another um, main um, town had purchased an electric bus. Um, is there only one still? In Maine, would we be the second? I'm not sure. No, MDI was the first district in the state to purchase an electric bus. And I am not sure if any other districts have moved 
that quickly. This was pretty recent. And that was not MDI, that was in the news. I can't remember the name. There's a community, a community bought four just recently. Yeah. A, 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 a municipality just bought four, but not a school system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there were only two. Okay, so uh, two schools in this, two districts in the state that got the DARE grant. We were one of them. So I'd be surprised if there was another district that's purchased it. You'd have to have an awful lot of money up front. When you say municipality, could that be Cape Elizabeth or Valmont? I'm not sure which one it was, but there, there were four. There, there were city buses. Yeah, there were city buses, not school buses. Oh, so, yeah. Portland and Bedford. Yeah. So it was. Portland and Bedford. And are those city buses or school buses? School uh, buses. Greater Portland Metro and Bedford Saco Old Orchard Beach Transit. So it sounds like they're quasi municipal. Yeah. Okay. This was this this was a school bus that I saw. Uh, simple Google, we could find it. I'll search some more. Yeah. If, if it was MDI, then it was MDI. MDI. Yeah. 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 Again. And this doesn't preclude the you know, local fundraising, uh, local organizations donating the charging station, for example. I think there's already been you know, mm -hmm. talks with local organizations that might want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, having a daughter in the high school and the global science program, um, I am even more educated than I used to be on where we are with carbon emissions and global warming. And I think, as Maria had said in a letter, that. Um, even if the costs were not as comparable as they obviously are. And um, it, it, is, it is the time to be doing everything we can to be. And so putting, you know, if we're going to be teaching this and advocating that we need to be taking care of our planet, then we need to be acting like that as well. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or discussion? All right, um, all those in favor? Any opposed? And they're also healthier for the children to be riding on. Yeah. And, and safer too, because. And that concludes my report. This is very exciting. The good Yeah. 30 feet. I was just looking, I was visualizing carvings. This is it offsets a thousand pounds of carbon. So a ton of carbon is 27 feet cubed. That would be 27 feet by 27 feet by 27 feet. So, uh, a couple of high this room. Yeah, more than the high of this room. So the amount of carbon it would save in a year would more than fill this room. That's great. Or a bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, anything else on finance, Peter? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, next is joint personnel, whose next meeting is May 26th. Uh, joint policies, next meeting is May 24th. There's just second reads here. And joint curriculum has not met. But we need to approve the second read, so I'll oh. make that motion, Patrick. Sorry, yeah. Second? Uh, yeah. Second and a second. Um, motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. And immediately on May 24th, we'll be reviewing the student handbooks. If anyone's interested. Great, thank you, Marcia. Next is ad hoc committees, joint communication. Uh, just met on May 17th. Uh, yeah, so it was our also our first meeting with uh, Sean, uh, instead of Maria. So we kind of walked through kind of how we structure our communications meetings and talked a lot about that. We talked about the retreat um, and uh, the annual report. Um, we also discussed that at the appropriate time, uh, it would be great to figure out some kind of event so that the community could come and see this beautiful building uh, and what has happened to it. Um, and now we can add a bus to uh, what we should be communicating about. Uh, so we'll concentrate on that on the next meeting. Awesome. 
Thank you, Marcus. Any questions for Marcus? Wasn't there something we just yeah, discussed was, earlier in this meeting? It was the yeah. award main home design. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that too. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Uh, next is the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Task Force, which met May 9th. Sarah, is that? Yeah, we met and um, we had you know, we had the different committees and we all had reviewed the equity audit and each committee worked to um, complete their um, sort of recommendations and that, will, that work is still, um, uh, people can still sort of submit to the different committees to, for those spreadsheets and that work will be coming to the board, right? <laughs> I'm not sure when, but um, and and then the uh, that task force is actually that was our last meeting, and that work is going to be picked up. All the recommendations are going to be picked up and going to be part of the strategic planning committee that will be forming sometime in the fall. Do you think? It'll it'll get going in the fall. Yeah. Um, hopefully, actually, the committee membership will be determined this spring. This spring. Yeah. So, um, but it was a great group, um, a lot of good work was done, a lot of good movement made, so I think it's a good good steps forward and, um, you know, get things underway and more stuff to come. And, and all the meetings, the McMenons are here. Also, I just would like to really say thank you to uh, our community member, Sally <coughs> She. Uh, she joined the committee um, early on and just really has an incredible organizational mind and a great passion for the work and she really um, really created a great framework and a great environment and just did so much work and I just want to say thank you to her. She did a lot. Thanks Sarah. Any, uh, any questions for Sarah? Seeing none, um, we'll move on to future future agenda items. Anything you guys want to see? Well, we, we will have our recognizing students meeting. Where will that be? Is that next? That's next? Next, next month. Yeah, next yeah. month. Yeah, that will be in the ISB theater again. And we'll do okay. what we did at the other ones that will move to the cafeteria. <clears throat> for okay. cake or cupcakes. Cake, cupcake yeah. kind of worked well because it didn't require it's, cutting yeah, and it's serving. Such, it's fun, you know, the, with the little kids and everybody's yep. so proud and parents are taking pictures. It's, it's probably the best meeting of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you guys expect to have the traditional number of students in attendance in terms of awards, number of awards that are being given out? We will not. We have our, some of the events that we typically recognize didn't were not held this year because of COVID. So our numbers are always less than the elementary school, but um, we will have some. Yeah. It will be pretty typical. Yeah. Yeah. We should probably get an idea of numbers so that we can order an appropriate number of cupcakes. <laughs> can you have too many cupcakes? <laughs> Anything else on future agenda items? I'm, uh, I'm interested in more about this brown tail moth topic. I don't know if that's our, if that counts here. We've already planned for that as a future agenda yeah. item, but I think we should broaden it. Uh, I'd like to hear about this the drone nest cutters, but I, as I understand it, uh, there are other arborists who do it from the ground up as well. Yeah, I'm inserting mean, poison into the tree. No, 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 no. They do the same thing as the drones do. It's just they do it from the ground up. With um, the cherry pickers. They can all get so high, though. So, But it would be good to have that in there, too. Yeah, I think just broaden the discussion, because I think, I mean... As informed a decision as possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so we can get going in the winter. Yeah, I'd love to see um, the state releases a brown tail moth... Um, uh, information on where they are, the intensity, et cetera, it's color-coded. Um, that would probably be worth mm -hmm. looking at as well. Um, and we invited once the um, state entomologist, uh, well, that was to a select board meeting, presented on 
the you know the, the population of brown tail moth moths at the time was increasing. Um, I have to wonder now because last year there was I mean I, I remember the first time I heard of brown tail moths I was at a gas station and all these white moths were flying around and I was like it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thousands of them, and uh, <laughs> and that hasn't happened. Uh, that didn't happen last year, so that was encouraging. And um, Ed, who works with me, um, you know, wasn't covered head to toe in a rash for most of the summer, so that was encouraging. Yeah, I think it's waning. I hope so. So one of the things that I was thinking is that we could actually collect some data from this year about what impact it actually had mm -hmm. on any students in our schools. Yeah. And maybe in the fall um, or early winter, come back to the topic. I think that it probably isn't the best time to come back to the topic at our June meeting um, because it's just a moot point for this year and people's memories fade fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the board would prefer to have like an ad hoc committee if, if the board wants to have a bunch of different people come in and present, I don't know how much board meeting time you want to take yeah. with having all kinds of people come in. So you might want to have an ad hoc committee that does the investigatory work and meets and has different people come in and learns, and then that committee comes and you know maybe invites somebody if the committee thinks that this is the best idea for our school system if we actually have a problem that we need to solve with some real data, and then that one person maybe comes in and presents to the board. I think it would be a lot of board time to have drone people come in, the cherry pickers come in, the sprayers come in, the injectors come in, you know what I mean? Right. So that's what I would recommend, that there maybe is a committee that forms of people who are interested yeah. that could do a little legwork in the fall and make a recommendation. I do want to say, like, we have part of our campus closed right now because we had kids covered in it. So yeah. I just want to, like, while we're all thinking about this, we're we're limiting our campus footprint. So just, you know, I was relieved when we were going to spray because our back end of our campus is kind of loaded. And our circle with our trees out front, really beautiful ones of blossom, attracted a lot. So that's closed right now. So well, that was no, we need to mitigate part that. Part of the data that... Yeah. To be collected. I mean, I think it's important yeah. to understand what we're actually looking at. And since we're going to be living it this spring, I think it would be great to try to be mindful of, you know, how many times there there've been nurses' visits that kids are dealing with rash issues that they contracted at school. Yeah. And also the investigatory problems. Too. Yeah, just a lot of that is not always easy just to be at school. Just like we, if we have an outbreak with them falling out of the trees. We close that part of campus because we don't want to. But I know have that's data that as well right. that right. we saw caterpillars falling out of trees sure. on you know this much of our campus. I mean, I think that that's important information, okay. and we'll try to collect that information this this spring. Gotcha. Hand it all over to the committee. That you guys should also participate in. <laughs> I think that's a great idea, Maria, yeah. appointing an ad hoc committee. Yeah, it's, I, I would say so too. Uh, one, another future agenda item would be the lead um, at the elementary school. As I know an update just went out to parents about all that. I think that's already on the June agenda. Yeah. Just as an FYI. And I don't know. Uh, is it? I don't think we put on this agenda because the retest is going to be done after this, so everyone in the community basically all has the information, um, the same information, and the retest is coming. The lines are being purged, yeah. retesting happening. We're going to have more information in June that we can share. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll see that in June. Anything else? Cupcakes. Cupcakes. <laughs> Ad hoc committee on cupcakes. Seeing nothing other than cupcakes, we're adjourned.